so I have to start assembling the camera body. So where do I normally start? Well I normally start by assembling these two components together with their various bits and pieces so I'll have to gather the parts. They're back from the cleaning now so I can sort out the bits I need. Alright, start assembling this. This is for the shutter release of course. It's held on here with a couple of uh, shoulder screws. There's two different head sizes on these screws. The larger screw goes to the top position. The smaller screw goes to the bottom position. On earliest examples, those screws were the same size. They were both small. They must have decided they needed more bearing surface at the top here. It feels okay, it's a little bit uh, not moving as smoothly as I'd like. I'm going to drop a bit of graphite powder in there and just work that lever backwards and forwards a few times. Got a lot of uh, broad flat surfaces rubbing together here. I don't want to use grease or anything in there. Oh, that seems good. And that piece does have its own return spring. Earliest examples had no spring there. Um, there was a mixture of features used for returning the shutter release components on the Retina 3C. But the, the spring here made its presence known fairly early in the piece. And there was a spring used on the shaft of the shutter release shaft. That was used at one stage. Both were used together at one stage. And I think both were used together right towards the end of production. Generally speaking, when they're clean and they're freshly lubricated, everything's running nice and neat. You don't need any extra springs. Um, it was only really a, becomes a problem when cameras are old and dirty. Uh, probably if they've got sand or dust or grit or things have got in there and stuff just didn't move as smoothly as it probably should have done. It was not a problem with nice new shiny cameras I would have thought. So the buttons, we've got a button top and bottom here. I'm just going to wipe around here with a bit of synthetic grease. And line up the springs and the buttons. They fit in there. The springs go in the holes in the buttons, they do not go over the pin. Put them over the pin and you'll find that nothing's going to work. That's good. So I'm holding those two buttons together. And I can slide on the front of the, sh the shroud over the top of that with a bit of luck. Yep, and that just pops out. So that's how they latch in position, just pulls in and they just latch in. So I'm going to apply a bit of synthetic grease there to this section. Some on the rail, top and bottom. And some on this plate, where these two buttons ride, you tend to get a bit of friction there too. 
That's good. That's running nice and smooth. And we have the component that had fallen in and caused us all our grief. So we'll pop that in position. And if I slide the inner, if I slide the lens standard back inside the um, the shroud, this piece can't get away. That's quite safe there now, and I can work on the rest of it. So to the camera body, what I first thing I've got to put in here is the transfer shaft, the shaft that takes the action from the shutter cocking rack and transmits it through to the front of the camera. So I'll just put a little bit of synthetic grease on there, put its retaining bracket in place, and a screw goes down from the top and holds that in position. Single screw, rounded head on it, very short. There's nothing like it anywhere else on the camera. It's, you can't mix it up with anything. Do that screw up lightly. Now at this stage I want the shutter cocking rack. Now the original was um, had its day as I would said, so I've got to put a new one in here. And I know I said that I had, didn't have any left, well as it turns out after a, uh, a big hunt around the house, I discovered I did in fact have one left. Now I'm just going to use a four thousandth of an inch feeler gauge here to set the distance that the rack runs against the body because basically the holes oversize here I can slide this bracket backwards or forwards if it's too far forward there's too much slop the uh, rack here which is quite narrow won't be contacting the full width of the gear below it and so the load would be taken over a narrow width of the teeth and in a situation like that stuff cuts out quickly so it's worth having that in and I found that a four thousandth of an inch is a very good measure. It uh, means that that will move smoothly without binding up, but it still keeps those the teeth in good contact. So that's that. We can slide in this section now. And there are four countersunk screws that hold this into the body. So I'll find them. So four screws. Well, the two for the bottom are easy. You can usually distinguish those because they are usually tarnished or still have some glue stuck on them or a mixture of both. They're going underneath the leatherette, of course, so they're not going to be seen by the general public or even by most computer te uh, camera technicians because few people are going to venture in under those leatherettes. Two at the top here, you can usually recognise those because the slots are usually somewhat distressed. These screws usually get done up very tight and they usually require some effort to get loose. Two at the top, two at the bottom, tighten those screws up. That's fine. This little insert here is what the tail of the bottom of your film cassette sits in. Then the tripod socket goes on top of that, which is held in with three screws. The screws are quite long. They're not as long as the ones that hold the film advance lever in place. But you'll certainly be able to pick them. Again, because they've been under the leatherette, they probably show adhesive or corrosion or a mixture of both. Get the three of them in position. When they're all in position, finally go around and tighten them up. These screws are often loose on retinas uh, because people have overdone tightening their tripod screw up. People get overcome with a fit of enthusiasm and uh, stretch everything. So far so good. Now if I was to extend the front 
this piece here would be no longer supported it would be likely to fall out and cause us grief in exactly the way it had done to the uh, previous person who'd been in there playing around if I put the shutter release shaft in position we should be good to go now it's also possible, I haven't checked this yet, that the shutter release shaft some of them were two pieces, some of them had a little tiny collar as well so I don't know whether this one originally had a collar if it did um, it would make a difference obviously to the effective length of it and uh, how much it moved this arm that looks pretty positive to me, I think that's probably correct. So with that in place of course this piece can't fall out because it's, it's trapped, it's got the shaft running through it. So normally at about this stage to save me getting into deep trouble, um, basically having to redo all the work I've just done, I would assemble the rewind shaft and put that in place and then hook a rubber band from there to the rewind shaft so that I can't, I don't lose my shutter release shaft and therefore that piece doesn't fall into the camera so a little bit of synthetic grease on the inner slide that into position in the outer it's got a little detent spring on it stops it slopping around too much some synthetic grease in the bush don't just push that in you'll end up bending things make sure I lift that tab up carefully with the tip of a screwdriver Make sure that runs smoothly, that appears to be good. That can go on the top of the camera and that's held in place with two countersunk head screws. Same size as the screws used to hold the uh, shroud and things in place. Except these ones will be clean and comparatively unmolested. They'll be pretty. Now look just as screws are supposed to look. Just tighten those up. That's good. Yeah, if I pull that uh, rewind up, run a rubber band around here once or twice to give it a bit of tension and hook that over that shutter release shaft there, it'll just stop it getting away so that I can continue working on the camera without in no danger of you know, tipping the camera upside down and having things fall out and causing me pain and anguish let's get this in place, here's our focus mount it's held in place here with four nickel plated round head screws run these down lightly when you've got the whole four in position then you can tighten them up if you just put one in position and tighten it up you can be rest assured that the others will be a fight here's the last one Yeah, four screws in position, now I can go around and tighten them, just nip them up. These are only small screws, you don't need to go crazy doing things up. Alright, focus helical next. Let's have a look at that. Here's the inner and outer helical. These are clean. Um, 
got to line, get these lined up so that they're correctly positioned. We've got our scribe marks on here, seeing where they are. Uh, two, two marks here on the outer. Where's my two? There's, where's my two marks on the inner? Way over there, so I'm a little bit out. Let's rotate that around a bit further. See where we go. Okay. Multi start threads are always entertaining to get started. It's better. Let's see where we are. Oh, pretty close. About one away there, so I'll move that one notch. Is that it? That's it. The inner and outer are level. Our marks are aligned, so that's the correct position to the inner and outer flash he uh, lens focus helical. I'll put a bit of naphtha on there. And I'll just work that, those two components together. That'll rub off any high spots, um, any patches of oxidation or something, anything that would cause a rough surface there. When I'm happy with the, uh, the feel of that, I can put some helical grease on there and you don't need much of this stuff you don't need to pack the threads with it I usually put a bit in around five positions around the thread and then work that in Check that it feels smooth. Feels pretty good, but a bit uh, less than smooth at the front edge there. I'll just put a couple of spots here. We'll work that. Maybe a rough patch there. Maybe just dry. Oh, that's good. So a bit of grease around the outside here where it drops into the mount. And where those two guides are, I need to make sure that there's just a touch in the inner helical in the, appropriate, in the mating slots. And this goes in one way because we had our double line at the bottom a single scratch line at the top makes it easy for me to determine which way around it goes a bit of fluff there I'll get rid of that that's popped into place and I'll check that moves freely it does that's nice and smooth it's not over loose it's just nice and smooth in action and that's just ideal the retainer ring goes on here before I put the retainer ring on, I'll just wipe that with a tiny bit of grease. You can tell where it's mostly in contact because you'll see a bright line near those screw holes where the, the screws are obviously pulling that down against it. You don't need much in there. Four countersunk screws hold the retainer ring in place. And at this stage it's worth being extra careful because if you drop these into the cavity in the body down here for example it gets between the bellows and that front standard and 
you never get the, the, them to fall back out again. You end up having to open it all up so that you can find the screw and pull it back out. So take care not to drop them into anywhere. I've found out all these things of course over the years. You make enough mistakes, eventually you'll learn. Right, let's check the action of that again. That seems good. Right, I'm going to close the bellows down, the front standard right back. And we've got four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. So I'll put those screws in place. And then after that, the bellows will be firmly attached to the front standard. And as I extend the front of the camera, the bellows will stretch open. As always, start the screws. When they're all started, then you can go around and tighten them up. that. Extend the front out again. Put our focus scale ring in position. Of course we've got our scribe marks on here so that I can align this correctly. That looks good. Now sort out my screws. There are two smaller screws which hold the front piece on and four larger screws which hold the focus scale ring in place. So I'm getting the focus scale ring in place first. And normally I start all my screws and once they're all started make sure that I have my focus scale ring correctly aligned with the alignment marks Then nip those screws up. They don't need to be done up very tight. Uh, if you tighten them up too much, all you'll achieve is that you will make the focus very stiff because you'll distort the shape of the outer helical and as a result it will bind on the inner helical and won't run smoothly. So we'll get this plate in place. On the rangefinder 3C and 2C cameras, this plate has an arm at the top which couples through to the rangefinder. Of course that's not required on a 1B because there is no rangefinder. Just checking the action of that focus, that seems good. I'll collapse the front slightly. I need to get my the front part of the transfer shaft in place and it's two screws a bit of synthetic grease on the outside a bit in the centre for good measure and a quick wipe on that front surface that drops into place there Extend the front out and the shroud that goes over that gear can go in position. There are two chrome screws that hold that in place. The one at the bottom here is difficult to see. You really can't see it once the camera is assembled. So 
sorry the batteries ran flat. Yeah, right, I was just saying there are two screws here, chrome screws. The one at the bottom can't really be seen once the camera's fully assembled. The one at the top can. So if you've managed to chew those screws up, or if somebody has chewed them up for you, make sure the pretty one is in the top position, and the ugly one is in the bottom position, and no one will be any the wiser. So that's in place. Front opens and closes nicely. That's good. So, what else can I do? Oh, we can put the door in place, I suppose. Quick wipe of uh, synthetic grease in the slots here, top and bottom. Check that these arms are not stretched out. They seem to be good. Hook them into position. We had a spacer washer in the top and our two pins. Here's one of our pins. That's definitely one of our pins. I can see two spacer washers now, that's interesting. Okay, let's put the uh, heavy one at the top. The other washer may just have come to me courtesy of the uh, cleaning tank. It may be a leftover from the previous repair. Run that into position. Tighten that up. No, I don't need a washer on the bottom of the door, so that washer was probably a leftover from another camera. I know on a previous repair I did have to find a new washer, and it was probably a replacement for that one. I can get this screw started. That's better. Run that in. I can't say that's very enthusiastic about closing. Oh, I think these arms are bent. Um, Yes, yeah, someone's been, this one of course didn't want to close, people have tried to force it to close, this is bent in. That's supposed to be 90 degrees there, well it's considerably less than 90 degrees, so I'll just give that a little bit of body English. That's better, a little bit more. Right, yeah. That's good. So there's their front standard focus mount and so forth all together. Uh, it just needs a film advance components put in here, viewfinder on the top, and uh, shutter back in really, and we'll be good to go. So far, so good. Well, I can start putting the components back into the body now for the film advance and so forth. So taking some molybdenum paste, I'll wipe in the holes here and here where the shafts for the release lever and the lock lever run. And here I'll run a little bit of molybdenum paste on that surface where the spring on the Release lever runs, pop the lock lever in position, put its spring down in place, hold that down with my thumb,
while I put the circlip in position clip that into place check that that moves freely that's good I've already fitted the spring back to the lock the release lever here uh, it was slightly out of shape I was able to get that bent back to a shape that pleases me more drop that in there make sure that's seated correctly and I want to put its return spring on the top and the screw that goes on the top there that screw also that's the adjustment screw for getting the point at which the shutter releases and the film advance is released to all happen at the same time down a bit from there that's probably a good starting point here I've got the film take up spool just put the metal bush back in the base of that and drop that into the cassette into the well at the back of the camera and here I have the film advance shaft I'm just checking to make sure that the cam on the end of the film advance shaft isn't loose it's staked or riveted on it's um, if the camera has been dropped on its base sometimes this will come loose and it feels quite good I'm going to use some graphite grease to lubricate the shaft at this point this is where it runs through the bush this is the bush, this piece here it revolves around there of course the bush stays fixed in the camera body and the shaft revolves inside it I like this particular graphite grease it uh, is very good at sticking to the surface so it stays stays in place now yeah, that's not what it wants to be it goes in there I think I could probably I can lubricate that spring with a bit of graphite grease. That was a bit dry looking. It um, was greased before, but that grease had dried out. Of course, this has all been through the cleaner. Going to make sure that the tail of the spring here is tucked in the groove on that bush. That's fine. And taking some synthetic grease. I'll run it around the cam surfaces here top and bottom there are two cam sets of uh, ratchet teeth if you like there one controls the motion of the film advance in the advance direction one controls it in the return direction back to the park And this can go in the body. Oops, film advance, film take up spools trying to get away. Let's pop that down in the body. I'll swing my lock lever to one side. Swing that round to there. It should just about drop down into the film spool. I think it has. I'll just check. Yes, that all looks correct. Three screws hold this in place. Yeah, the same size as the ones that hold the chrome trim on the base plate of the camera but uh, unlike the 
the screws holding the base plate on the camera. These ones have never had glue on them so you can usually sort them out because all these parts have been through the ultrasonic cleaner it, all the screws tend to be quite clean make sure those screws will run down now they're in place so I can tighten them up these need to be fairly tight but um, if don't overdo it, if you overdo it, get too enthusiastic, all you'll end up doing is distorting the teeth, distorting the screws. They, they're only brass and they will distort. Yeah, I'm taking a bit of molybdenum paste here and applying that to the tip of this lever. This lever is the lock lever for the rewind button and the rewind button is reset when you move the film advance again get this spring in position and for one reason or another I have don't have my favourite pair of tweezers in my hand I've got another set which is not so useful for holding stuff right and do that screw up tight got to swing the spring back over the tab here now so I'll pick that spring up with my tweezers and at least for this task this, this, these tweezers are ideal because it's quite quite a strong spring so that's fine that's all that's needed there oh you could see my rubber band trying to get away there now that would cause me some grief and anguish if I let that get away let's just pull that film that rewind knob up rubber band back where it belongs that's to hold my shutter release shaft in so it doesn't fall out I need to put my spool in place my um, sprocket shaft so the aluminium film sprocket goes in here the slot goes to the top put a bit of grease on the shaft synthetic grease top and bottom where it runs through the body castings I usually put a tiny bit on the teeth of the gear for good measure that should drop down through there at the base of the camera I'm holding some pressure on that shaft from the top with my finger at the base of the camera I'm pulling back the lock lever so that it can pass all the way through let's close the front of that camera up oh I shouldn't do that yet let's do that Do this top piece first. I'm forgetting myself there. On the Retina 2A, you could get away with that. On the 3C, you do things in the right order or you won't get the parts together. 